Minority Stress Theory was developed by Elon H. Meyer in the early 2000s to provide a framework for understanding stress processes in minority group members and to help contextualize negative health outcomes observed among minorities. Stressors are defined as events and conditions that cause change and that require the individual adapt to the new situation or life circumstance. The concept of social stress extends stress theory by suggesting that conditions in the social environment, not only personal events, are sources of stress that may lead to mental and physical ill effects. Prejudice and discrimination can induce changes that require adaptation and can therefore be conceptualized as stress. One elaboration of social stress theory may be referred to as minority stress to distinguish the excess stress to which individuals from stigmatized social categories are exposed as a result of their social position. Social theorists like Durkheim, Merton, and Moss, concerned with alienation from social structures, norms, and institutions, have long emphasized the importance of individual harmony with a social environment. When incongruence exists between individual and societal construction of the world, stress is exacerbated and health is compromised. Social psychological theories involving social identity and categorization extend understanding of intergroup relations and their impact on the self. The process of categorization triggers important intergroup processes and provides an anchor for group and self-definition. The social environment provides people with meaning to their world and organization to their experiences. Interactions shape constructions. Minority stress is unique. It's additive to general stressors that are experienced by all people. Stigmatized people are required an adaptation effort above that required of similar others who are not stigmatized. Minority stress is chronic. It's related to relatively stable underlying social and cultural structures. Minority stress is socially based. It stems from social processes, institutions, and structures beyond the individual, rather than individual events or conditions that characterize general stressors. Minority processes include distal stressors, which are those external, objective, stressful events and conditions, which can be chronic or acute, and proximal stressors, which are individual internal stressors. These can include expectations of negative events and the vigilance that this expectation requires, the internalization of negative societal attitudes about a stigmatized identity, and identity concealment, which is the act of hiding one or more parts of an identity from some or all of an individual's social network. Characteristics of identity may be related to mental health both directly and in interaction with stressors. Since people's self-conceptions are closely linked to their psychological states, stressors that damage or threaten self-concepts are likely to predict emotional problems. On the other hand, minority identity may also lead to stronger affiliations with one's community, which may in turn aid in buffering the impact of stress. Salience valence and integration with other identities may be relevant to stress. Salience may exacerbate stress because the more an individual identifies with, is committed to, or has highly developed self schemas in a particular life domain, the greater will be the emotional impact of stressors that occur in that domain. Valence refers to the evaluative features of identity and is tied to self-validation. Negative self-evaluation enhances stress. Integration with other identities is the goal in reaching self-acceptance. In optimal identity development, various aspects of the person's self are integrated. Many minority group members respond to prejudice with coping and resilience. Minority status is therefore associated not only with stress, but with important resources such as group solidarity and cohesiveness that protect minority members from the adverse mental health effects of minority stress. Two functions achieved through minority group affiliations are to allow stigmatized persons to experience social environments within which they are not stigmatized by others, and to provide support for negative evaluation of the stigmatized minority group. The minority stress theory model brings all of these elements together to highlight minority stress processes and to depict stress and coping and their impact on mental health outcomes. Minority stress is situated within general environmental circumstances, which may include advantages and disadvantages related to factors such as socioeconomic status. An important aspect of these circumstances in the environment is the person's minority status, for example, gender or sexual diversity or race. 
a person's minority status is closely related to other circumstances in their environment. For example, minority stressors for a gay black man who is poor would undoubtedly be related to his poverty and race. Together, these characteristics would determine his exposure to stress and coping resources. Circumstances in the environment lead to exposure to stressors, including general stressors, such as job loss or death of a loved one, and minority stressors unique to minority group members, such as discrimination and employment. These stressors are interdependent. For example, an experience of anti-trans violence is likely to increase vigilance and expectations of rejection. Often, minority status leads to personal identification with one's minority status. In turn, such minority identity leads to additional stressors related to the individual's perception of the self as a stigmatized and devalued minority. Because they involve self-perceptions and appraisals, these minority stress processes are, are more proximal to the individual, including expectations of rejection, identity concealment, and internalized stigma. Of course, minority identity is not only a source of stress, but also an important effect modifier in the stress process. First, characteristics of minority identity can augment or weaken the impact of stress. For example, minority stressors may have a greater impact on health outcomes when the stigmatized identity is prominent than when it is secondary to the person's self-identification. Second, minority identity may also be a source of strength when it is associated with opportunities for affiliation, social support, and coping that can ameliorate the impact of stress. Looking at the model, we can see that general stressors interact with proximal and distal minority stressors to impact health outcomes. Environmental circumstances, including one's minority status, contribute to those general stressors. Minority status then impacts the individual through distal stress processes, like prejudice events. Minority identity contributes to proximal stress processes, like identity concealment and internalized stigma. Minority identity also impacts an individual's coping and social support through group affiliation and identity integration. Overall, minority status and identity lead to experiences of unique and complex stressors that can have significant impacts on health outcomes. Minority stress theory was developed initially for the lesbian, gay, and bisexual population, but has since been utilized to further understand minority stress processes for different minority groups, like trans individuals and racial and ethnic minorities. It is a very useful framework for understanding how larger environmental stressors interact with individual stressors and compound to impact overall stress levels and eventual health outcomes. The other very important piece of minority stress theory to remember is that minority identity status is very often a source of strength and resilience. Minority identity affiliation can serve as a protective factor for individuals in minority groups.